I'm Brian Lilly. Parliament Hill gets a taste of CBC's hell. That is the topic of tonight's byline. Sexual harassment stories appear to be all the rage this week, and I'm not talking about Gomeshi Quiddick, as blogger Kathy Shadle calls the goings on at CBC. I'm talking about two Liberal MPs being ousted from the Liberal caucus by leader Justin Trudeau. Earlier today, I informed the Speaker of the House of Commons that I have suspended Massimo Pacetti and Scott Andrews from the Liberal Party caucus pending the outcome of an investigation. These two members of Parliament have been accused of serious personal misconduct by members of Parliament from another party. When the news broke this morning, I was sitting with my show staff and we all thought the same thing. Some MPs have finally been busted for creeping on their young female staffers. Nope, not in this case. This is MP to MP allegations. Doesn't make it any better, but I think we can expect more to come out. I guess if people are feeling like they must speak out in the wake of the Gameshi story, that, that's a good thing. I've got two daughters, young daughters, many years from joining the workforce, but when they do, I want them to be able to know uh, and have bosses that know that certain things are just off limits, that they're wrong. Apparently some people don't know that in 2014. I find that pretty shocking. As I said, I think we can expect more to come from MPs and senators in all parties on Parliament Hill. It's long been known that there are zipper problems, as they're often called, on the Hill. But there's also a difference between two adults having an affair and a boss using their power to force themselves on someone to harass them. And that's what I think we're going to start seeing stories of in the future. How that will play out, how it will be dealt with is unclear. The labor laws that most of us are subject to often don't apply to political staffers. MPs will need to think long and hard about how they deal with this issue, the allegations today and the ones to come. Every MP should get due process in the House of Commons, but too often what is decided and discussed on the Hill is done behind closed doors and the public can't know. We just get to pay the bills. And that's why we should know. We're talking about the House of Commons right now, the, the people's house, and we foot the bill for everything that happens there. We also need to make sure that the allegations like this aren't just swept under the rug, that they're dealt with properly. Which brings me back to CBC which looks like it's trying to sweep their problem under the rug. Last night, I called for parliamentary committees in the Commons and the Senate to call Hubert Lacroix and other CBC executives, past and present, to appear before them. It's up to MPs and senators to investigate what's happening at the state broadcaster. The breaking news today about allegations against MPs doesn't change that. Some MPs are having problems, and as I said, more stories are likely to come out. But that doesn't change the fact that Parliament remains the proper place for oversight of a multi-billion dollar government-owned corporation. MPs and senators are the only ones that can, without getting into the expensive and ultimately useless world of public inquiries, they're the only ones that can subpoena witnesses, demand to see documents, including internal CBC documents, and force change at the state broadcaster. CBC's actions so far don't show that management is up to the task. They've hired a prominent labor lawyer from Toronto to investigate, but one that can hardly be considered arm's length or independent of CBC. Janice Rubin is a regular guest on CBC. She's guest hosted shows. She's well connected at the Corp. On his website this morning, Sun News regular Warren Kinsella posted this email from a former and very senior CBC -er reacting to this appointment. Friends, the report into workplace harassment and improprieties at CBC has the appearance of a whitewash already. Former employees with concerns that are unrelated to Gomeshi specifically are directed to contact HR and not the internal investigator. How is HR a management, uh, an arm of management, likely to receive information from former employees, particularly if HR has already been involved in their disposition settlement of harassment claim? Why would the HR department revisit anything it previously ignored or buried with compensation? The standard of review announced by CBC is totally inadequate. That's the end of the email. Now, I'd have to agree with that assessment. Having someone with such strong ties, not allowing people with allegations against others at CBC to come forward, but instead sending them to HR is unacceptable. As one former CBC or with knowledge of problems that the corporation said to me, the HR department HR department has known about these problems for years, be it Gomeshi or other men, and they've done nothing. Telling women to go to the HR department ensures that nothing will come of this. Now, just as we know there will be more stories of MPs and bad behavior, we know the same is true for CBC, and those stories will be coming out soon. 
Just as MPs cannot investigate themselves behind closed doors, neither can CBC investigate themselves behind closed doors. It's time to open things up. And that's the byline. Here on Parliament Hill and in every workplace, women have a right to be in a secure work environment. Everyone who works in these places has a right to be in a secure work environment free of harassment. Tonight's top story, Parliament and CBC both now facing questions of sexual harassment. As they booted two Liberal MPs from their caucus today, the opposition party notified the Speaker of the House with a letter from Liberal Whip Judy Foote, who wrote on October 28th, 2014, my leader was made aware in one instance directly by one of the parties affected of two unrelated allegations of personal misconduct made by two members of Parliament against two members of the Liberal caucus. I believe a process that continues to deal with these allegations in a serious manner will require the involvement of a neutral third party trusted by all concerned. Toronto Sun columnist Warren Kinsella joins me now. Warren, this is quite the week, not only on Parliament Hill or CBC, across the country, this is an issue people are talking about now. It is the issue people are talking about, and that's a good thing. And you and I were talking about this before. Um, all of us have been aware of some things that have gone on in Parliament Hill that shouldn't have over the years. And... Um, uh, it's going to be a difficult time. It's going to be embarrassing. Maybe the end of some careers, but it's time I think that we talk about these things and deal with them. Now, in both cases, uh, I guess you could say part of the problem was uh, you would have allegations of so and so is a little creepy around women, or so and so is a little hands-on with young women. But the people that ha could actually substantiate the claims weren't willing to come forward. That's changing now in the wake of Jean Kameshi. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're 22 years old and you're showing up on Parliament Hill and it's your first job, you're working with, um, you know, somebody's older, you just don't have the power of that person. And certainly at CBC, with somebody like Jean Kameshi, you just don't have that kind of clout. Mm -hmm. So it's understandable that some of them would just wouldn't want to speak because they think that it would affect their job. But uh, I guess now with the, the number of allegations coming out, Many women are feeling more comfortable in doing so, and that's a good thing. All right, before we leave uh, the Parliament Hill side, and I want to ask you about the, uh, the email that I, I posted from your website earlier today. Uh, the fact is, today we're talking about two liberals, but this isn't a partisan thing as far as the uh, allegations of sexual improprieties on Parliament Hill. This goes across party lines into every party. It is a multi-partisan effort, uh, unfortunately. And it does affect all of the parties, and all of them have a responsibility to deal with it. And you know, I want to say something on all of the the leaders. I think you know, I thought Trudeau looked prime ministerial today. I thought he looked quite impressive. But you know, Harper has been very tough on these issues in the past with members of his caucus. Um, and Mulcair, I have no reason to think that he wouldn't be the same way. But there are members of the caucus with each of these parties who have behaved badly. You and I know of people who have. And they've gotten away with it. And I think now Trudeau has opened the door. And I think that Harper and Mulcair will do likewise and shine some light on some unfortunate behavior. Well, and the, the unfortunate part is, as, as I say, you hear these allegations, you hear the rumors, but you don't have the facts. You can't back it up. And so going public with it, you could be open to a lawsuit if people that know don't come forward. Uh, which brings me to CBC. They've hired Janice Rubin to do this investigation. And I want to read from that email. Uh, that you posted today from a, a former senior CBCer who said, Friends, the report into workplace harassment and improprieties at CBC has the appearance of a whitewash already. Former employees with concerns that are unrelated to Komeshi specifically are directed to contact the HR or contact HR and not the external investigator. How is HR an arm of management likely to receive information from former employees, particularly if HR has already been involved in their disposition settlement of a harassment claim? Why would the HR department revisit anything it previously ignored or buried with compensation? The standard of a review, or standard of review announced by CBC is totally inadequate. Uh, you know, th this is the problem. You know, it's like um, government setting up public inquiries to investigate something, and they make it so narrow that it ensures that nothing comes out. And in this case, they're saying CBC has essentially said we're only, as far as we know, they said we're only going to investigate Gomeshi, and not all the other allegations swirling around. And so that's problem number one. Problem number two is the one you identified and what the author of that email sent to me this morning identified, which is what lawyers call a reasonable apprehension of bias. 
that the person brought in to make the decision, look at the facts and rule on the law, is conflicted in some way. And Ms. Rubin is a respected lawyer, employment lawyer, but she's been a regular contributor to the CBC. She's been part of CBC programming for years. And she is not sufficiently arm's length. CBC needs to show people that it is prepared to take their lumps and bring in somebody who is arm's length in the way that a judge would be and so that that person can make the ruling without fear or favor. That's not the person they've got. I think that part of what they need to do, clear house, especially at the top, put in someone with a mandate to fix all this. Warren, great talking to you as always. Send it.